Well, we like war. We like war. We're a warlike people. We like war because we're good at it. And you know why we're good at it? Because we get a lot of practice. This country's only 200 years old, and already we've had 10 major wars. We average a major war every 20 years in this country, so we're good at it. And it's a good thing we are. We're not very good at anything else anymore. Huh? Can't build a decent car, can't make a TV set or a VCR worth the fuck. Got no steel industry left, can't educate our young people, can't get health care to our old people, but we can bomb the shit out of your country, all right? Huh? We can bomb the shit out of your country, all right? Especially if your country is full of brown people. Oh, we like that, don't we? That's our hobby. That's our new job in the world, bombing brown people. Iraq, Panama, Grenada, Libya, you got some brown people in your country, tell them to watch the fuck out, or we'll goddamn bomb them. Well, when's the last white people you can remember that we bombed? Can you remember the last white, can you remember any white people we've ever bombed? The Germans, those are the only ones, and that's only because they were trying to cut in on our action. They wanted to dominate the world. Bullshit, that's our fucking job. That's our fucking job. Think of how we started. Think of that. This country was founded by a group of slave owners who told us all men are created equal. Oh yeah, all men, except for Indians and niggers and women, right? <laughs> Always like to use that authentic American language. This was a small group of unelected white male land-holding slave owners who also suggested their class be the only one allowed to vote. Now that is what's known as being stunningly and embarrassingly full of shit. And I think, I think Americans really show their ignorance when they say they want their politicians to be honest. What are these fucking cretins talking about? If honesty were suddenly introduced into American life, the whole system would collapse. No one would know what to do. Honesty would fuck this country up. And I think deep down, Americans know that. That's why they elected and re-elected Bill Clinton. That's why. Because, because the American people like their bullshit right out front where they can get a good, strong whiff of it. Clinton might be full of shit, but at least he lets you know it. Dole tried to hide it, didn't he? Dole kept saying, I'm a plain and honest man. Bullshit. People don't believe that. What did Clinton say? He said, hi, folks, I'm completely full of shit, and how do you like that? And the people said, you know something? At least he's honest. At least he's honest about being completely full of shit. There's a reason education sucks, and it's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The real owners, the big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's against their interest. That's right. I got this real moron thing I do. It's called thinking. <laughs> and I'm not a very good American because I like to form my own opinions. I don't just roll over when I'm told to. Sad to say, most Americans just roll over on command, not me. I 
have certain rules I live by. My first rule, I don't believe anything the government tells me. Nothing. Zero. No. Nope. Then you have the media. Not just the news media, let's include them all. The media are almost literally exploding with bullshit. Because they're located right at the crossroads of all the other bullshit. The media are made up of equal parts, advertising, politics, business, public relations, and show business. These people are sitting right at bullshit junction. There's enough bullshit in the media for Texas to open a branch office. And you still have enough left over to start two law firms and a Christian bookstore. Because... This whole country has a manhood problem. Big manhood problem in the USA. You can tell from the language we use. Language always gives you away. What did we do wrong in Vietnam? We pulled out. <laughs> huh? Not a very manly thing to do, is it? When you're fucking people, you gotta stay in there and fuck them good. Fuck them all the way. Fuck them till the end. Fuck them to death. Fuck them to death. Fuck them to death. Stay in there and keep fucking them until they're all dead. We left a few women and children alive in Vietnam and we haven't felt good about ourselves since. That's why in the Persian Gulf, George Bush had to say, this will not be another Vietnam. He actually used these words. He said, this time we're going all the way. <laughs> Imagine an American president using the sexual slang of a 13-year-old to describe his foreign policy. <laughs> if you want to know what happened in the Persian Gulf, just remember the names of the two men who were running that war. Dick Cheney and Colin Powell. <laughs> Somebody got fucked in the ass. Well, you know, if I had to say to you, what is the answer? I would say massive bloodshed. I really would. I don't really, honestly, deep down believe in political action. I think the system contracts and expands as it wants to. It accommodates these changes. I think the civil rights movement was an accommodation on the part of the of those who own the country. I think they see where their self-interest lies. They see a certain amount of freedom seems good, an illusion of liberty. Give these people, give these people a voting day every year so that they'll have the illusion of meaningless choice. Meaningless choice that we go like slaves and say, yo, I voted. The, the limits of debate in this country are, are, are are established before the debate even begins and everyone else is marginalized they're made to seem either to be communists or was some sort of disloyal person a kook there's a word and now it's conspiracy see they've made that something that that is that is uh, sh should not be even entertained for a minute that powerful people might get together and have a plan doesn't happen you're a kook you're a conspiracy buff so who you know the only way you cure that death bloodshed i don't advocate it but i see that it's really the only